Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. So Digimon World Next Order has been out for over a week at this point and as of such I wanted to put together a video discussing my initial thoughts and whether or not I think you will enjoy this game. Now as is the usual with any game that I don't get a review copy for, because the game just came out I can't in good conscience release a new review, especially given the fact that a lot of people who are putting out these day one reviews without getting review copies are just making reviews of the PS4 version and saying that they're for Switch, which I find to be a bit disingenuous, but that's neither here nor there. Now, that being said, this video will still be very useful because in truth you can get a really good idea of how a game plays and whether or not you'll enjoy it from the first 10 to 20 hours of gameplay and honestly in a lot of cases even much sooner. I think that these types of videos are good for giving you guys an early depiction of what the game's all about before potentially putting out a full scale review in the future. I am of course playing on the Switch version so my experience will be catered towards that but I can only assume the PC version would play better than the Switch version since the PS4 one does. So take with that what you will. Now Digimon World Next Order is not your typical monster taming game. It's more of a monster raising RPG hybrid and in this video we're going to be discussing what that entails because admittedly these types of games are not for everyone but I will also be discussing why if you're not typically into monster raising style games you might still find this game interesting and should give it a chance. Anyways all that being said make sure to sit back relax and let's talk Digimon World Next Order. Okay, so as per the usual with any type of video like this, we are going to be mostly discussing the gameplay and a little bit about the Digimon roster. If and when we do make a full-scale review, we would generally break it up into the game story, the way the game plays, then the roster, but I think this will be kind of like a light version of that. So as for the premise of the game, essentially what happens is just like in Digimon World 1, which this title is a spiritual successor to, you decide to play with your Digimon V-Pet and then are whisked away into the digital world. There's an opening sequence slash tutorial that goes over how battling works and then after you defeat the machine Draymon, you're brought forth to Jijimon's house in the digital world just like the original game. This is where the game really begins and we can sort of dive into how the mechanics work which ultimately will decide whether or not you deem this game something that interests you. From this point on the game's gonna hit you with a ton of information but I'm gonna gloss over a lot of it and just get into the most important stuff from a should I buy this game standpoint. Firstly you'll be tasked with two starter Digimon which will only be shown to you in the form of eggs. These eggs will start in baby form then evolve into in training and from there it's completely up in the air which digivolutions you'll be getting first because there is an intrinsic evolution system that branches off and while you can control this to an extent later on right at the beginning you kind of don't know what happens so it's sort of luck of the draw there's 10 digi eggs which branch out to the larger roster of 200 digimon from it unlike a lot of monster taming games we cover this game doesn't actually feature monster catching but instead in order to fulfill your compendium you're going to be raising these two digimon from babies and experiencing new digimon through evolutions rather than capture. Your Digimon will have lifespans and depending on how you treat them, for example, if you die a lot in battle or if you make them really unhappy, their lifespans can be shortened and eventually when they do die, they'll become Digi Eggs again, allowing you to start the process over. Now that being said, the game does still feature progression in the fact that every time your Digimon reincarnate, the baby forms will become more powerful than their predecessors and you unlock various skills to power up yourself as a tamer, so losing your Digimon does not mean you're just starting the game from scratch. Furthermore, a lot of the early game will revolve around you training your Digimon in the training dojo or whatever it's supposed to be called in almost a monster rancher style where you pick what kind of training you want your Digimon to do. It extends for an hour of in-game time. Then you see the results of that training. On top of that, there is an in-game timer that will pass as you play the game, which will determine in-game days, allowing for you to restock on certain items each day. It'll determine when your Digimon wants to go to the bathroom, when they sleep, etc. The majority of the game will revolve around this and the starting town where you can recruit and further expand. This is not a Digimon story title or a typical RPG where you just get monsters to fight and you adventure around and that's sort of it. This is more so like the old school Digimon V-Pet Tamagotchi-esque experience, but expanded. Now, before you click off the video and decide this type of game isn't for you, there is a lot of other aspects that you might want to consider. Once your Digimon are trained up to rookie level via the in-game dojo, you'll be allowed to explore into the open world present within the game that is segmented into different areas with a vast array of Digimon populating them with a range of levels. The game does not go easy on you from the get-go and a lot of low-level Digimon 
can in fact absolutely wreck your team and finishing battles with low HP can lead your Digimon to get hurt, requiring you to invest in medical aid for them. I think the early game is a huge hurdle for a lot of people because there's a lot to consider when going into battle, when actually training your Digimon, uh, with where you want to explore, etc. When you do get into the loop, however, the game does become a lot more enjoyable and you start to really feel a sense of progression. A lot of what you'll be doing is exploring, recruiting new Digimon you find to come to the town, battling various Digimon in the wild, following the main quests, etc. Battles themselves are a little bit interesting in that they take place in real time, but I'd consider it to be more like a semi-auto battler if that makes sense. Basically what I mean is battles will take place on their own with or without your input. Your Digimon will move and attack on their own, however during certain times you can cheer on your Digimon to increase something called order power which then allows you to give them certain orders amidst battle. You can choose to allow your Digimon to attack using a certain skill, defend if you have that unlocked, or keep loading up your points until you get their special abilities which do massive damage. You're also able to throw items onto the field during battle, so unlike Pokemon where the potion would immediately activate before anything else, you do have to account for this because there is a bit of a delay there. Now, the game features a wide array of biomes, there's a ton of items and resources to collect around the world, and even boss battles like this Numamon here, but it's very hands-off in telling you what you need to do and kind of lets you do your own thing with Gigimon in the town giving you your next main objective, but other than that, you can pretty much explore to your heart's content. I am, of course, oversimplifying a lot of this game's mechanics for the sake of the video, but if you want to learn more information, you can also check out my starter evolution guide, my skills guide, or my tips and tricks guide, which I put out recently. Now, when it comes to recruiting Digimon, you can actually recruit different Digimon whom act sort of like NPCs. Some of them will want you to fetch something for them. Some of them will want you to battle them, but ultimately they'll end up going back to your town which will increase the town's ranking, making it better, and just having more resources for you. Some will give you certain items and stuff like that. I honestly think that there is something in this game for fans of more streamlined RPGs to enjoy, and even myself, who's someone that doesn't really delve too deep into monster-raising games, I found that this game, at least in my opinion, is a lot more enjoyable from the perspective of someone who appreciates a world to explore than something like Monster Rancher, which is entirely menu-based. That's not to hate on Monster Rancher, I actually did enjoy it, but I do think that this game caters to me a little bit more because it's sort of like, if Monster Rancher had an open world aspect to it. Now, really quick, I want to talk about the Nintendo Switch specific stuff. Uh, the game runs fine. I know it technically doesn't run at the same capacity as the PS4 version. I haven't seen any issues at all. And the only real noticeable differences between this version and the PS4 version is the fact that there's a beginner mode, which is really useful for newcomers, and the fact that you can run, allowing you to move a little bit quicker through the map. I know there's generally a lot of taboo around playing games on easier difficulty, but in next order, difficulty is pretty synonymous with grind, with beginner mode being the only true easy mode. The other two modes are just basically how much grind you're willing to do. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Again, this is going to be pretty surface level as it is more so pertaining to my first impressions with about 15 to 20 hours put into the game at this point. When I get to the end of the game, we'll definitely be putting out a full scale review if that's something you guys are interested in. But for now, since the re-release is new and a lot of people are wondering if the game is for them, I think this is the perfect type of video to get out early on without pretending I beat the game on Switch on release day and just trying to get a review out because I'm sus. But yeah, the one thing you're going to have to consider is the Switch and PC versions are $59.99. The PS4 version, as of the time this video is going live, is only $10 on sale. But once the sale's over, it'll also go up to $60. So I'd say if you are going to pay $60 for either, you might as well get the new ports. Since I think portability is a really nice thing to have, at least with the Switch version. But ultimately, it'll be up to you. That being said, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe for daily monster taming content. You can check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon linked below. Special thanks to my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Dark persona candy marunci and exodus and we'll see you next time peace